last time out on the narrow and twisty circuit of mid-Ohio, things look all set for another Audi win to put the championship leaders back on track for a repeat title as they cruised away from the green flag, while behind them in the pack, 675 champion elect Didier de Radigo spun, but he recovered to rejoin the chase in a field that was fast, stringing out in a line behind the fast disappearing number one car as Tom Christensen streaked effortlessly away in front. Second place in losing touch, not good for the Panos team, but there are others on the circuit having worse problems. John Field luckily walking away from this impact with the wall on the front straight. The number two Audi had electrical problems early on, eventually solved by a set of new plugs and an ECU change, which put it effectively out of the running for a repeat win. Now it was up to the Panos crews to take the fight to Audi, but it was clear that they just didn't have the speed. Then came a stop-go penalty and a slightly suspect pit stop call for the number one car, and the Audi team found themselves looking at the wrong end of the 51 Panos with added complication from Dyson Racing's Riley and Scott, James Weaver and Butch Leitzinger looking like real challengers for a podium finish. But Christensen was soon passed and then had a similar problem while Frank Lagorce held the racing line and held up the Audi. And all the time his teammate Jan Magnussen was galloping away with an unexpected lead he was able to hold all the way to the chequered flag for the team's second victory in three races. But the Audi crew still dominate, holding all top four places on the points table, but it's all mix and match between the two factory crews and there's nothing in it at all. But it is very much a question of which Audi driver will be LMP champion this year, while Corvette men Fellows and O'Connell head GTS and BMW drivers Leto and Muller top the GT points table. We're almost at the end of the championship now, just two more rounds left on the calendar, both of them at marvellous racers' racetracks like Road Atlanta, plus a non-championship event in Malaysia at the end of the year. Right now though, round seven of the ALMS championship comes from Laguna Seca in Northern California. Laguna Seca is a racetrack almost entirely dominated by the legend of one corner, but the corkscrew is just one part of this complex layout. Yet another narrow and twisty challenge for the drivers. Sasha Masson and Lucas Lur lost the series lead last time out, but are still close enough to salvage the title, though qualifying behind the blue and white factory BMWs was hardly the way to launch their counter-attack. Ekblom and Muller were only fractions of a second ahead in a session cut short after one of the PTG cars caught fire. And though Leto and York Muller were two tenths clear of their teammates, JJ has been saying all season that grid position doesn't mean much in a three-hour race, but he was still happy to be quickest. Yeah, very pleased. Of course, uh, I mean, really the qualifying doesn't mean that much, you know, it's, it's much more important here to have a good race set up for the race because it's two hours 45 minutes and uh, you know with this GT cars the tyres are not so wide so you really need to take care of the tyres all the time and uh, just to find a good balance for the race so uh, I mean of course you know if you have a good car good balance you know it always goes well in the qualifying as well. Quickest of the Corvette runners was Ron Fellows in the number three car defending a championship points lead and looking to get ahead of fast but not always reliable rivals in the number 26 Salim once again, quicker in qualifying, and this time by a useful seven-tenths of a second. After missing out on a European crown by the smallest of margins, Franz Conrad and Celine are looking to this championship for a good end to the season, and a maiden ALMS win is just what the doctor ordered. Two did a good job again here. All the last races was not our fault. 
we had really bad luck. Uh, some mistakes with other drivers, a small crash in uh, Mid Ohio, then a base car in uh, Mossport cost us the race. So, uh, yeah, we're happy on the ball and it uh, looks like uh, we have a good chance to win the race. Far ahead on top of the LMP 675 table are Didier de Radigues and Mercadino, one of only two lady drivers who are regulars in this series. And so she's pleased to have qualified ahead of Claudia Hurchin. Sixth on the grid wasn't what the champion crew wanted this weekend, but the front end of the grid was pretty crowded. Frank Lagos was just five hundredths of a second slower than teammate Jan Magnussen, the closest the two Panos cars have been all season. Magnussen had been fastest in practice, but when it counted, he found himself overrun by a swarm of Audis as everyone else found improvements. Everyone expected Audi to have something in reserve for qualifying, but though the number two crew are the only Audi men to have won in the last three races, qualifying saw them a couple of tenths off the pace and third on the grid. Fastest in practice were ELMS refugees Stefan Johansson and Patrick Lemery, arriving as European drivers and teams champions. But they were three tenths away from the pole time set by the number one Audi, Dindo Capello, who set that time, and teammate Tom Christensen need a win after a three race drought and they need to get a grip on the title chase again. But even they struggled for grip on the circuit until the very end of the qualifying session. Uh, the gap to the second uh, to the second is quite high, and that's that's it's important for the feeling to start the race. And uh, but you know it's always not easy to start the race, and uh, we have to be careful because we need some laps to warm the tire up. And. Uh, we have to be careful in the first few laps. That sets the scene for a race which once again promises drama, but this time might also give the answer to all three championship riddles. Stand by to cheer for a giant, giant killing act by Panos. Any kind of points finish will give one or both Audi crews their run at the crown though, and that's really the main job they need to do this weekend, while Brabham and Magnussen have to win to keep their hopes alive. It's still close in 6-7-5, so watch out for a battle between De Radigas and Duno in number 5, and Graham and Maxwell in 57. That's a virtual tie at the moment, so this race could decide that particular points battle. Likewise, in GTS, a win for the Celine this weekend could cast a shadow over Fellows and O'Connell and send that one to the wire. And it's that close again in GT, where the BMW crews need to carry their qualifying pace into the race itself and summon up formation finishes that keep the Porsches off the podium. And that won't be a pushover either. On board now with Jan Magnussen in the number 50 Panos, looking for a good start from the second row and an even better finish. The green flag is waved and the start is five abreast. They touch the wall up the hill, turning left out of sight into turn one. That was a very busy start indeed. We have six cars going for it, locking up the brakes into turn one. Very close indeed. It's tight. Oh, and that's the uh, golf was spun right on turn two. Joint on the entrance to turn two, we've lost the number 18 Audi. Oh, and the number one car as well on the gravel. Two cars, did they touch in the corner? Very busy, side by side. And now Capello rejoins well down the field, but I think Patrick Lemery is still there. Further back still, so that is not good at all. Capello down in something like 15th, 16th position on the racetrack, and somewhere behind him is the other Audi, the nearly crowned European champion, on board now with Capello. Look, he's right down the back of this field. It shouldn't take him too many laps to catch up with the rest of the pack, but this is not what they wanted. Remember, they were looking for a victory here to put them back on top. Let's have a look and see what happened. There it is. Round they come, side by side, and perhaps there was a touch there from the number 38 champion Audi certainly looked as though the number one car was tipped off out of it, but you can't see from this angle, and it may well be that Patrick Lemery got a helping hand from the panels behind him as well, but again, really difficult to tell from here, and perhaps the onboard would have given it away if we'd had them 
in the cars at the back but they were riding with Capello looking forward so we'll never know Panos leads, Biela is second third place is Johnny Herbert, behind that is the Cadillac, so Magnussen out in front, this is second place, the number two Audi Frank Biela at the wheel and the Cadillac's right up there as well that's the number eight car you're looking at so first, second, third, fourth place for Cadillac. How much longer can we expect that to go on for, though? And will the panels be able to make it into the distance? Certainly, we've got a nice big lead there for Jan Magnussen. And Biela is now struggling to catch up and being caught as well by Johnny Herbert. Down the hill they come. The television camera angle really flattens the corkscrew out. You get no sense of the sheer drop which is involved. It is a truly dramatic corner on board with Jan Magnussen now. Empty tracker in front of him. That's exactly what he wants to see. Up over the hill into turn one. Left, and this is turn two. This is where all the drama happened, but it's all cleared up. So you know that the number 18 Audi is running somewhere. Long, long left-hander. Track bending to the right now and climbing uphill. Lots of short, sharp straights, lots of big, long corners. No resting place anywhere at all on this circuit. Even the front straight is a very short one. And always going uphill, uphill, uphill. This gives you the clue to how quickly the corkscrew goes downhill because all of the uphill gradients are suddenly snatched away from you in turn nine by the drama of that single set of complex corners. Audi, Audi, and then Cadillac second, third, and fourth, down through the court. It's a breathtaking plunge. Biela chasing after the Panars, Herbert chasing after Biela. And this is exactly what Panars wanted if Magnussen can make an escape. This could well put them on course for another victory and it could put them right in the frame for a championship battle at the final round. And remember, double length, five extra points, all to play for when they get to Road Atlanta. And this could be a good result too for the champion Audi crew. We go on board with JJ in the number 42 BMW. And it looks like he's well in command of this Remember, there's a championship battle at stake here as well. And at the moment, that's a championship winning position for him in first place with his teammate Frederick Eplon behind in the number 43 car in second place. And the Porsches well down the order. It's the number 23 car of Sasha, Masson and Lucas Lure that they're bothered about. And I think if I was Jan Magnussen, I'd be bothered about this too because Frank Viola is definitely getting closer. Starting to mix it with the traffic, dodging around the slower cars, bound to slow the laps up, that's for sure. But at the same time, it's quite clear that Frank Biela is a lot closer than he was. Jan Magnussen made an escape, but Biela is definitely, definitely reeling him in and bringing Johnny Herbert with him, I think. So, a sterling effort from Biela. Remember, the crew of the number two Audi could well be on for the title this year with the bad luck that has afflicted the number one car over the past two or three races. So this is an important race for Frank Biela and for Emanuele Pirro when he gets in the car. And this is an important piece of work from Frank Biela. Always cheerful, always charming. But uh, when he puts his race face on, Frank Biela really does mean business. And I think Jan Magnussen is about to find out just how much business he really does mean. Herbert staying with him, and there's a big, big gap. So that second corner tussle on lap one really has given these three a chance to make a serious break for it. And Biela doing his best not only to hang on, but closing down on Jan Magnussen. Here's the GTS leader, the Saline number 26, Terry Borschella, out first for Franz Conrad. And as you can see, running away with it ahead of the Corvette. So at the moment, class leader, and he really needs to take this win, put a nice big bucket full of points under his belt and get on terms with the Corvettes to make it a final round showdown when they get to Atlanta.
reliability, bad luck, it's all played a part in the Celine's year. And one or two good races with good luck could really turn everything around for them. No doubt about the car's speed and no doubt at all that that's in the pit lane. That's number 37, John Field in the Intersport Lola Judd. And driving through the pit, he's been shown the closed black flag. He obviously thought that meant a stop-go penalty, but it's actually meant as a warning. So he's driven through the pits, or almost driven through the gravel trap as well. Back out, bit of a mistake on his person, back into the gravel. The number six car, Nicholas Johnson, had a little tap from uh, Jan Magnussen while he was going past, lapping the BMW. And that sent him into a spin. Here come the rest of them. And you can see that uh, Jonsson has rejoined in the middle of another little battle as another Panos is looking for a way past him. That's the number 51 car. Max Angelelli. And that is Leto in the lead of the GT class. Nobody behind him, or so it would seem, JJ Leto running away with this, and there's not a sign of any pursuit whatsoever. So this is looking very good for JJ. 133 points, JJ Leto and Jorg Muller. Masson and Lure, the number 23 crew in the Porsche, somewhere behind him, have 123, so the 10 point margin, and then it's Hans Stuck and Boris Said about two points further down, so a lot to race for in that. And I think we have just missed Frank Viola nicking the lead from Jan Magnussen. No doubt that the number two car is out in front. He was closing in, and now he's not only closed, but passed. That's Magnussen behind him in number 50, and behind that, the number 38 car of Johnny Herbert. So now Frank Viola has turned the tables, Panos are back to playing catch-up from what was a good-looking lead and they were getting on for a second slower than the fastest Audi in qualifying and it would seem that that deficit is not quite as great in the race but there is nevertheless a deficit because Frank Yela has not only been able to reel in Jan Magnussen over the last few laps but as soon as he got past he is able to pull away whereas Magnussen and Herbert seem to be holding station. Johnny Herbert in last year's Audi R8 is there, but I'm not sure that he is quicker than the panels. We'll have to have a look at that and see how that one develops. Traffic has a role to play, but all of these cars in GTS and GT and indeed 675 are so well versed in this by now that they, generally speaking, manage to keep out of the way, although We've seen on these tighter racetracks that it's not always possible to give a quicker car all the room it would want on the corner that it wants it. But that has changed things, can change things on a lap-by-lap -lap basis. So that's part of the excitement of this series, though. All the drivers have to deal with it. Frank the Gorse, number 51. Running on his own. Magnussen, number 50, chasing after Frank Biola. Wallace is there. So still the same order, first, second and third up front. Traffic and the gap is closing. Well, we've seen it happen the other way and now Magnussen has been able to close right up with Frank Biola and gets a launch down the straight now towards the Audi but you've got to carry all your speed up over the crest of that hill and the gap is already opening out again he was much closer closes him down under braking long long left turn through one and two Frank Viola really looks as if everything is going his way they're closing up, I think that was number 57, I think that is Scott Maxwell, who is the lead car in 675, ahead of number 5, and that's another very close championship battle there. He's got plenty of room though, so I'm sure that he won't mind moving over and making room for the race leader. If he gets the chance, look, he can't do it here, down the hill they go, 
Yela has to follow him down through the corkscrew. That will let Magnussen Clay catch up and bring himself closer, and indeed it has brought him closer to the back end of the Audi. But look at that. Maxwell moves quickly aside. Only one car got through there. And uh, now Magnussen is stuck behind the Porsche. That's not what he wanted at all, but he's made his way through the gap, and so too has Johnny Herbert, or has he? Well, look at this. Nose to tail almost on the front straight. Very close indeed, with Herbert going with them. And uh, that little battle set to go on and on and on. Uh, Maxwell did what he could, but it wasn't a great deal, but it's brought those three very much together. As we said, he's racing his own championship race today. Didier de Radigue is in the number five car, which he cruised with Milka Duno, who's driving it at the moment, leads the 675 with 103 points, but he's currently in second place on the racetrack. John Graham, who cruised the number 57 car with Scott Maxwell, has 96 points, but they are leading at the moment, so they're in a strong position. And so there is everything to race for as we go on board with Dindo Capello. This is the number one Audi fighting back through the field was down as low as 17th place after that lap one spin and the number 18 Audi dropped right down to 26 but Capello is pushing on he's up there chasing after fourth place because I think that's him in fifth that's Frank Lagorce in front of him who is in fourth place so that puts Capello up into fifth and the job of Frank Lagorce here really has to be to keep position, not let the number one, oh look how hard he's trying, not let him go through and try to give his teammate Jan Magnussen, who is further ahead, a better finish, more points and a better chance in the championship. But Capello trying hard, he needs a good finish as well, just three points behind Emanuele Pirro in the championship and tied with Frank Biela. So it's all happening here as we head towards the end of the season. This Laguna Seca racetrack is suddenly packed with championship battles all around its length. And as we said, drama from the word go. Only to be expected. We've seen it race after race so far this season and it's happening again here on a Sunday afternoon that is gradually warming up. Started typical Northern California. Oh, that's Claudia Hurtgen. And the number 11 car is on its way out. So that puts... Uh, co-driver Steve Knight out of the championship reckoning and there's nothing wrong with the car that you can see came down the hill without power so it looks as though there was an engine problem there and that has clarified things at the top of 675 but it hasn't resolved them the course has got Capello much much closer now looks a little bit further away with the onboard camera than it is in real life so Capello is really closing down as they go up the hill and I think in front of them that's Milka Duno in the number five car passing the slower Porsche looking in the mirror now moves aside and lets Lagorce go through oh, almost closes the door didn't see Capello well she almost shut the door on the panels and he definitely had to get out of it and that's put Capello right up underneath the rear wing that's not what Frank Lagorce wanted from that little scenario at all and now with traffic intervening all around and you're looking at yeah magnuson there not frank the gorse that's kai wankham on the gravel track looking for a way back to the racetrack it's the black bit there it is he's okay then uh rejoins at turn six so we were saying capello and the gorse and it's capello has gone through well that little moment going up the hill really cost frank the gorse the place and gave dindo capello the place so through he goes now, and Frank Lagorce comes straight back at him, tries to close up under braking, but doesn't quite manage it. And if the Audi is luckier with the traffic than was Frank Lagorce, then that could be the last we'll see of these two together. And that rear view might be the last thing that Frank Lagorce sees before the Audi disappears up the road. We saw the number two car do it to the number 50 Panos just start to ease away it's happening now and as we say if Capello gets luckier with the traffic then certainly he will be moving away from Frank the course who had to get out of the throttle at the worst possible moment just at the crest of the hill just when he needed speed and acceleration the most it was denied him by circumstances well outside his control and now he's having to say goodbye to his battle for fourth place and here he is fifth watching Capello disappear as quickly as he can make the Audi go. 
bad luck then for all the Panos crews. Here's the moment again from outside. We saw it from on board with Capello and look, just shuts the door and, and goes wide again to let everybody through. So Milkaduno really wasn't ready for that at all. And as you can see, oh, and that's why Kai Wankham, is that a different spin or is it the same one? I think that might have been, no, he was at turn six, wasn't he? So we're on board now with Dindo Capello chasing after the leaders from fourth place. He's got Johnny Herbert in front of him, Jan Magnussen in front of that, Frank Biela in front of that. These three are still pretty much together in traffic. 37 car, John Field back out of the pits. Biela goes through, Field holding it wide, letting them all go through, all three of them nose to tail. So this is the battle for the lead. This is getting quite exciting. Panels have got to win this title fight. So will the traffic work for Magnussen, which seemed to be his best hope? One second of a lap off the qualifying pace, but the team always goes for race setup over grid position. So perhaps those differences don't make as much difference right now as they did on Saturday afternoon, and perhaps the panels has still got a chance. Frank Biela is the race leader. Jan Magnussen is in second place. Johnny Herbert is in third place. That's how close it is at Laguna Seca. First, second and third, almost in the same breath as they go over the hill. 37, John Field running out of order behind them is not in fourth place. That is now the number one Audi of Dindo Capello, which has recovered from a lap one spin and 17th place has passed the 51 car of Frank Lagorce and relegated him to fifth and he's now hunting down this little trio, this happy band of brothers. How much longer, though, will they be happy? Biela certainly has found it hard to maintain the pace that he set as soon as he passed the panels, and doesn't seem now to be able to pull away. Remember, everybody was saying that the tyres don't really start to work until you've been out there for a while, so now we'll start to see exactly who has got the race set up. Closing on the BMW, and remember there's a championship battle at stake there, so nobody here really wants to give up their lap times. They might want to give up track position to the race leaders. Look at this, Magnussen is having a go, challenging Frank Biela. Nobody went up the hill on the gas early. This is very good, very good indeed from Jan Magnussen. He is in a big, big hurry, and I think his tyres are coming on now, and he's starting to go for it. Look at this, on sheer brute power over the hill, late breaks Biela and turns downhill in front of him. What a pass from Jan Magnussen. That was superb stuff. Unless the Audi has got a problem and we're going to see it slow up, and I don't think that's the case. That was an excellent piece of work from Jan Magnussen. Very controlled, but very, very aggressive. He knew what he was going to do, and he just overwhelmed Frank Biela in those turns. Johnny Herbert will be anxious to have a crack at that himself. He's not shy, Johnny Herbert, our Essex boy there, is not shy about that sort of thing, and you can expect him to have a crack as well if he thinks he's in with a shout. Traffic now in front of Magnussen. Will that give Frank Biela the opportunity to come back? Not on this lap, I don't think so. And here is the Celine Terry Borschella, the GTS leader, actually has had a little touch with Max Angelelli in the number eight Cadillac and a little spin as well. In fact, both of them had a spin, but he still kept the lead and that is the Panos diving into the pits. So from the race lead, Jan Magnussen, who made the point obviously on an empty tanker, he wouldn't be here now, so a little bit lighter perhaps than the Audi and that might have been all there was to it. Into the pits he goes. 26 GTS leader, as we've said, fingers crossed for a good solid run. They've had bad luck and some mechanical unreliability. And out goes the number 50 car. Just fuel and tyres. Here's Capello racing to catch up. Oh, no, he's not. He's coming into the pits. Capello making an early stop as well. That didn't stick, did it? Capello coming in for his stop as well. Both the Cadillacs have stopped, uh, but not changed driver. Yes, they have changed drivers. Both Cadillacs have changed drivers. And the number 38 car has been in. 
and Johnny Herbert still in it. These two are swapping, so Christensen is taking over the number one car. Frank Biela is still out there and is the race leader, but he hasn't stopped. And that is the number 57 car in lots of trouble. Scott Maxwell has obviously hit something very hard indeed. He was the 675 leader, but that looks like retirement now. And that almost certainly will give the 675 title to Didier de Radiguez. He's struggling back to the pits, but that right rear wheel isn't really where it belongs. That's the 44 Viper. Uh, and that's Mike Silcox at turn six. He's just taken the car over from Tom Wickart. And a uh, little bit enthusiastic on Colt tyres as into the pits just goes. Yes, it is going to make it. That wheel is just about coming off. But it's not the bolt. I think he must have broken the axle, the half shaft, something like that because it's loose but it's still bolted in place but it's had a very hefty whack you can see how badly deformed the rim is and this is the number two Audi in the pits well this is Frank Biela this was the race leader Biela staying in the car fuel going in they're there with the tyres what are they doing with the tyres no nope, they're not doing the tyres this is the number five car 675 is in disarray that's the number five car he was the class leader he was the champion elect or rather she was but now on its way in smoking from the rear almost a copycat of what's just happened to 57 so it's all happening in 675 and the championship gifted to the number five car has been taken away again they're trying to get this car close enough to the pit box to work on it and obviously they think they can fix whatever's happened to it it's obviously the wheel, it's obviously the suspension, maybe the axle, and this is obviously where it happened. Runs too deep, hasn't got a hope, on the brakes too late, and sideways onto the gravel, and luckily that gravel really did take a lot of the speed out of that uh, impact with the wall. It just slapped the wall sideways there, and you can see what damage has been done as a result. And so I would suggest they could fix that, but it's going to take a while and they could fix that maybe that looks like oil smoke as well as tire smoke there though maybe they can't fix that one so this championship really is in total disarray and it's now down to the pit crews to turn somebody around get them back out on the racetrack and see if they can grab a championship advantage what's happening here then race leader frank biela behind him the number 50 panos magnuson in second place very close they've both stopped and they've both come back out again so this battle for the lead continues and uh, this time it's Audi back in front so we've seen plenty of chopping and changing here Frank Biela again under pressure uh, elected to stay with the old tyres full tank though and maybe with the extra weight on the Panos cannot catch up with the Audi that is Christoph Tanzo who took over the number seven Cadillac at the pit stops and that is Beach. Oh, and that's Magnussen in the, in the pit lane. He's obviously hit the tyre wall. Yeah, Magnussen's in the pit lane. How did that happen? Magnussen getting out of the car. Well, that's just the most extraordinary thing. Yeah, Magnussen climbing out of the car in the pit lane. And his title hopes, the panel's title hopes, are ended at this moment because that puts them completely out of what was looking like a very solid second and a challenge for the lead. And that's the number one Audi. Christensen has stopped on track. Christensen has. It's stationary. The engine appears to have gone. There must be yellows now. We've got a Cadillac Beats. We've got a, and there are yellows. We've got a car in the pit lane and we've got an Audi stopped on the racetrack. And that was just an incredible few moments. And it seems that Jan Magnussen was helped into the pit lane as the number seven Cadillac gets a tow back and gets the tyres it needs to rejoin. Magnussen was helped into the pit lane by the number 38 Audi. A little tap in the final corners pushed him sideways into the pit lane, ended his race as Frank Viola hands over to Emanuele Piro. Both the BMWs are in there. Leto in front of Ekbom, out goes Emanuele Piro. He's on his way back onto the racetrack. We're still under yellows, remember. And the GT battle is happening here. There's another car coming in, and it's the 51 Panos. This is Frank de Gorse handing over to Klaus Graf. And that's the number one Audi rolling off the track. He's had a little shove, and it's off the track. And the word is 
that it was clutch failure that put a stop to it. This is the restart, though. Glimpse of the number 18 car went down to 26 on lap one. He's back out there now, and the way things are going, could quite easily win this race as Johnny Herbert grabs the lead. And the number 18, the Gulf Audi, suddenly has leapfrogged its way up towards the front of this field, but it hasn't stopped yet. So there may well be a complete change there uh, as we look at Johnny Herbert, who has not stopped during the yellow and is quite possibly going to get a stop-go penalty because of the incident with Jan Magnussen's Panos. So that could change everything at the moment because he's second, so it's Biela there somewhere should be the race leader and this is the GT battle look at this the number 23 Porsche was the points leader until the last race now in second place or well, the crew is in second place it's third on the racetrack and trying to get past the number 43 car well both the Mullers in the cars now so Jorg Muller somewhere ahead in 42, Dirk Muller there in 43, there's Frank Biela there, oh onto the gravel, oh that was so close, we've seen the Audi do that earlier, picked up a lot of dirt underneath and he's ripped a lot of bodywork on the kerb, there's a bit of damage underneath the number 51 panels and it looks as though that was a very unfortunate moment for the Panos team, they've just been helped out of second place and I think they've just helped themselves out of a podium finish. Lots of things flapping about underneath there, bits of bodywork are missing, you can see right under the car, you can see the heat shield and it's hard to say but they could well have done some extensive damage to the suspension or worse. That's the 18 car cruising, drama again, what is going on? Rolling slowly down the hill, absolutely no power whatsoever. Stefan Johansson rolling towards pit lane, hoping to get there. Not sure whether he will do. Well, yes, he's going to make it into pit lane, and he seems to have recovered power as well. Although that was a very quick piece of freewheeling. There's something wrong in the cockpit. Not quite sure what the problem there is, but it's dashed their hopes as we rejoin GT. The two BMWs with the Porsche behind them. The PTG car is in front of them. Muller and Muller, Jorg and Dirk. And behind that, it's Lucas Lure, I think, now taking over in the number 23 car. Third on the racetrack, and that is not what they need for the championship. They really need to be much further in front. They really need to be leading this GT class. Blue flags waving all over the place, but I don't suppose anybody in this little train needs to be told there are people behind. So it's all happening now, the crew of the Champion Audi car are in discussion with the stewards about that stop-go penalty for the number 38 car as the GT battle intensifies even further. Well, it was hot before and now they are three abreast, closing on the number 22 car, which is running out of sync. It's not actually in front and neither is the number six car. So it's 42, 43 and 23 are P1, 2 and 3 in GT. That's what you are looking at. That's just not the racetrack order at the moment. And that Panos is, it's, well it's not on fire, but it's definitely smoking into the pit lane, trailing bodywork and smoke. The bodywork has got worse and worse and worse, and there's obviously some fairly serious damage under there. That's oil smoke, that's definitely oil smoke. They've damaged oil lines or something when that car went off the road and you can see it's gradually worn away and torn away and this is looking like a disastrous weekend for them it's a disastrous weekend too for Silcox spinning the number 44 oh temper temper no 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 do it gently uh, turn it round and have another go well you can see that he was very angry with himself and if he couldn't guess that just by the way he spun off he could guess by the way he hammered that throttle in an effort to get back on there and this is the 26 car coming into the pits Terry Borcella the GTS leader handing over to Franz Conrad who is waiting there, he's over the wall now, about to help the outgoing driver so the fuel crew can touch the car and the incoming driver and in comes Johnny Herbert right behind the number 38 car, remember didn't stop in the last yellows so a pit stop had to be made anyway and in he comes 
Andy Wallace taking over from Johnny Herbert as they wait with fresh tyres until the refuelling is completed. That's the way it has to be. And out on track, Emanuele Pirro is the race leader. And I think they've decided, yes they have, to keep the car here. They've decided with the stewards to keep it at rest after the pit stop for 20 seconds. And that's the assessed penalty for the tap on the back end of the panels. And that's Hans Stuck walking away from the number six BMW. And quite clearly that is out of the race. And I've got a feeling it's pointing in quite the wrong direction. Yes, it is. He's had an off. He's lost the back end, coming down the hill, out of the corkscrew. Oh, and that's going to be a very big one. Ow! That hit the tyre wall very hard indeed. Luckily, we've already seen him walk away from that. So Hans Stuck is out of it. And out of the pits goes Andy Wallace after the penalty has been completed. But I think that's still going to put him in second place behind Frank Biela. Hans Stuck quite unhurt then, which is more than you can say for the BMW. Here's Franz Conrad back out and still in the lead of GTS after that pit stop. Behind him somewhere is the number three Corvette and then the number four Corvette. That's the order. And this is just exactly what Franz Conrad and Celine wanted from this weekend. If they can carry this all the way to the flag, then this will mean the title can go all the way to the wire at the next round. On board now in the number 23 Porsche, third in GT, which is not what their title hopes needed. Finishing in this order will double the gap at the top of the points table, and that will make it impossible for Masson and Lur to win the title. They'd need BMW, they'd need JJ Leto to lose it at the next round. So really, they need to get a hustle on, they need for the blue and white schnitzer run cars to have as much trouble as the PTG boys have been having this weekend. Here's someone with no trouble at all though, this is Emmanuele Pirro following the 18. Audi back on track but two laps down in third place. Andy Wallace second going over the hill after the penalties and the pit stops looking on for a good finish. But still getting on for a lap down as well if he doesn't get a move on. And that number eight Cadillac is fourth place on laps and ahead of the number 18 car which is in third place on the road so it's all getting very busy indeed as we head towards the end of this race and into the pitch goes Emanuele Pirro and you can't help thinking this is just going to be splash and dash there's no drivers no tires it's just a fuel stop and with a bit of luck you can see that he was almost a lap in front with a bit of luck, this is going to put him back out on the racetrack in front still and perhaps by a big enough margin not to worry. Sitting at rest, well, he didn't keep it there for very long, so this is looking good for Audi. And Emanuele Pirro is certainly going to rejoin this race still in the lead after that splash and dash. And we still don't know whether the others will have to come in as well. Less than half an hour left to run in this race, and that's the number five, Lola Judd. The 675 car of Didier de Radiguez coming back on track very slowly after replacing the whole rear end following a suspension collapse. The team say that's a first ever failure. It wasn't accident damage, it just fell apart when he put the brakes on. But with the other class retirement, this means that de Radiguez in number five now leads the 675 class and he's on his way to the title. And that's the man who's leading 900, going over the top of the hill in the number two car, out of the pits, after a splash and dash, still with a lead. That's Emanuele Pirro. Came out of the pits with about 30 seconds in hand. He's not hammering it, I don't think, now, because Andy Wallace, second place in number 38, is closing in. There's the GTS leader, number 26. Franz Conrad taking over after Terry Borchella ran two hours straight and double stinted those Dunlop tyres. How well have they worked? And now Franz Conrad is fending off the number three Corvette. Here's the GT leader. That's the number 43 car. 
on for a formation finish, on for their third 1-2 finish of the year, but the wrong way round, 42 in front of 43, would give the BMW crews the manufacturer's title for this year. And the good news for Franz Conrad is that Ron Fellows has gone in for a last minute splash and dash. So he's on for his second win in the series this year. They won at Sebring in the 12 hours at the start of the season, remember. And the car's won lots of other times in other races, but this will be its only its second win this year in this class. And this is the championship for Didier de Radiez, still limping round, but he's on his way now to the chequered flag and so is this man here is Emanuele Pirro but he's in a spot of bother now because Andy Wallace in the number 38 champion Audi that's last year's car and there it is behind the BMWs has more than half that gap it was down to 15 seconds but it's much less than that now the blue flag is waving I doubt if they need to be told and the white flag is waving there as well we're on the final lap then the last lap of Laguna Seca Emanuele Pirro about to give the number two Audi another win and really stake a claim on this year's title. Who would have bet on either of those things at the beginning of the season? Pirro looking very good indeed. Andy Wallace looking very good indeed in the number 38 car. But he's got to face the fact now that it is Pirro. He is rounding the last few corners. It's almost all over. Bar the shouting, Pirro's going to take the win. Pirro, Wallace, well, uh, he can't do it in the time he's got left. I'm sure that Emanuele Pirro has got a little bit in reserve. He's been pacing himself on the last few laps. He hasn't taken any chances. He doesn't want to spoil it through the corkscrew for the final time. Down the hill through turn nine goes Emanuele Pirro with Andy Wallace behind him. And believe it or not, running somewhere in the back there, the number 18 car is going to finish on the podium after all the bother they've had all through this afternoon. But this is the moment that Emanuele Pirro and Frank Biela have been waiting for this Sunday afternoon in Northern California because the checkered flag is raised and drops and Audi one and two going over the line and third place as well. Don't forget, so lots of celebrations for Audi, even if it is the wrong way round. The BMWs have swapped, look at that, 42 ahead of 43 as they go across the finish line. Frank Biela and Emanuele Pirro just about pulled that one off as Andy Wallace slashed the lead from 30 seconds to just two at the flag, but two is all it takes. So the number two Audi wraps up its second win of the year and Champion gets second place while the golf car collects third. Franz Conrad and Terry Porcello took a long-awaited second GTS victory of the season over the Corvettes, while Leto and Muller grabbed the GT win on the final lap from their teammates in a move that also gave BMW the class manufacturer's title, although the driver's crown is still up for grabs. In fact, they all are, apart from 675. Didier de Radiges is confirmed as champion, but the rest are all available, especially with the final round at Road Atlanta being double distance and extra points. Pirro looks strong in LMP 900, but that's still open, and the longer race should suit the Porsches next time. So GT is far from settled either. And let's hope the Celine can go that distance too and take the title fight all the way to the wire to Corvette Menfellows and O'Connell.